Heyo my warm fuzzy butter cookies, Jessie here, and today I am going to read The Philharmonic Gets Dressed. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I like how the people are dressed up in fancy outfits because I love fancy outfits. And it's about like musicians getting dressed to play. And I like musician outfits too. I love how musicians like fancy themselves up just to play beautiful music, which is as fancy as them. It's like they're dressing up as the music that they're playing. Now this book is by this poet called Carla Cuskin, who probably lives somewhere in New York. And the illustrations are by Marc Simont, who is another French guy. He's pretty cool. So let's get, so let's open the book and see how they get dressed. It is almost Friday night. Outside, the dark is getting darker and the cold is getting colder. Actually, I forgot to mention, I have a German version of this book. It's an audiobook and it's narrated by Libra. And I love Libras because Libras are the symbol of beauty. Their ruling planet is Venus, the goddess of beauty, and their official metal is copper, which is like the most beautiful metal of all time next to gold, which is the Leo's medal. I am a Leo. I'm as pretty as a Libra. Leos are as pretty as Libras, maybe even prettier. Okay, let's get back to the story. Inside, lights are coming on in houses and apartment buildings. And here and there, up down in downtown, and across the bridges of the city, 105 people they're all orchestra players. You, like, need a lot of players to make a big sound, and it's so cool. They're getting dressed to go to work. First, they get washed. There are 92 men and 13 women. Wow. That's kind of sexist. Many take showers. A few take baths, like me. I'm a weirdo. Two men and three women run bubble baths. I miss having bubble baths as a kid. And one man reads in the tub while the cat watches. Okay, the book's gonna get all wet. Don't read in the tub. Like, better watch YouTube in the tub. One woman sits in the bubbles and sings. Maybe what she's singing, like the Queen of the Night or something. It's amazing. I love the Queen of the Night. So let's pretend she's singing the Queen of the Night. I am When they have finished washing, they dry. They use big towels and little towels and lots of dusting powder. Lots of it. All the men shave, except for three, who have beards. Two trim. Then when the 105 people are showered and bathed, shaved and toweled, dusted and dry, they put on their underwear. Don't laugh, guys. Underwear is really beautiful. It looks like a Libra. <laughs> The men wear undershorts or briefs. Some of the men wear t-shirt undershorts with sleeves. Some wear undershirts without sleeves. And a few of the 92 do not wear undershirts at all. But night and the temperature are falling. And one thin man buttons up a suit of long-sleeved, long-legged underwear. All the men put on black socks. There are short socks and long socks and fancy silk socks that have decorations called clocks. Some of the men wear leg garters to keep their long socks from falling down around their ankles. Thirteen women put on different kinds of complicated, complicated underwear. Underpants, pantyhose or stockings, petticoats or slips, and brassiers. One woman whose feet always freeze puts on wool socks over her stockings. When all of the men have their underwear on, they get into long-sleeved white shirts and button them up. Then they put on black trousers. 45 men stand up to get into their pants. 47 sit down. Each pair of pants is a shiny black stripe down the outside of each leg. The men zip zippers and button a button or two. One man has wavy black hair streaked with white, like lightning. He puts on a very soft white shirt with ruffles down the front. It has special cuffs that fasten with cufflinks. This man holds a wide black cloth belt around his waist. The belt is called a cummerbund. None of the other men wear belts with their pants. They button suspenders on their waistlines of, onto the waistlines of their pants. Snap the suspenders over their shoulders. 
eight women dressed in long black skirts. There were black tops, sweaters, or blouses. Four women put on long black dresses, and one wears a black jumper over a black shirt. A few of the women put jewelry on, a necklace, earrings, but no bracelets. Bracelets wouldn't get in the way while they're working. You see, she can't play the cello. <laughs> All the men put on black bow ties. Some tied them on in front of mirrors. Some stare into space and tie them. The thin man whistles a tune as he ties his tie on. Twenty-seven men clip on ties that are already made into bows. The men with the wavy black and white hair, the ruffly shirt, and the cummerbund ties on a very big white bow tie. It looks like a white bat. I love that tie. I would like to own that tie. No one else has a tie like his. He slips on a white vest and a black jacket that is short in the front and long in the back, where it divides in two, like black beetle wings. The jacket and pants are called tails, like the Sonic the Hedgehog character, sometimes like called the conductor tails. Tails could be a conductor, though. Tonight, all the other 91 men put on tuxedo jackets. These are black, too, with shiny satin lapels, but they do not have that beetle wing back. I think all the other men must be jealous of the conductor. What I wonder is, what do female conductors wear? I know non-binary conductors might wear this, might wear this thing. <laughs> like, I want that jacket. I love that jacket. Only maestros can wear it though, and I'm not a maestro. I'm only an amateur. When all, all the men and women are completely dressed in black and white, they get ready to go out. They put on overcoats, jackets or capes, boots or rollers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs. Then almost everyone picks up a case. The cases are different shapes and shades of black and brown. The man with the dark wavy hair with the white lightning in it, the ruffly shirt, cummerbund, and bow tie that looks like a white bat picks up a very thin leather briefcase. No one else has a case like his. What do you think is in there? Probably something really light. I think everyone else is jealous. Don't be jealous of the conductor if you're in a symphony orchestra. He's just doing his job. All the, wo all the 105 men and women say goodbye. Goodbye to mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, or friends, children, dogs, birds, a cat, whoever is staying at home. Then they walk out of 105 doors into 105 streets, and there they take cabs, cars, subways, or buses to the middle of the city. The man with the black and white wavy hat wears a black coat with a velvet collar and a white silk scarf. He steps into a very long car that is waiting for him outside his apartment building. While the driver drives, the man opens his case and looks at some papers. He sings a little and hums, like Wagner or something. I don't know. I don't know how many, like, musicians are, like, opposed Wagner due to his controversial thingies. I know there's some in, like, the, my school orchestra that do. At 8.25 on Friday night in the middle of the city, 104 people walk onto the big stage in Philharmonic Hall. They have left their overcoats, jackets, or capes, boots or rubbers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs backstage, and dark green metal walkers. They've also left their cases in different shapes and shades of black and brown back there too. Now 101 of the men and women are carrying the musical instruments that were in their cases. What, what about the other six? Well, let's find out. Three, three people do not carry instruments. They are the harpist who pay, plays the harp, and the two timpanists who play the kettle drums and smaller percussion instruments, the cymbals and a gong. These instruments are too heavy to carry around. They're already on the stage. There are 102 chairs on the stage and two stools. Near each of these, there is a music stand with sheets of music on it. The 105 people take their seats. The double, ba the double, play the double bass players sit on stools. Everybody turns to the first page of music. It is a white page covered with black lines and musical notes. 
The man with the black wavy hair lit up with white enters. He walks to the front of the stage and steps one step up on a box called a podium. There he can be seen very clearly by the 104 people on the stage and by the hundreds of people in the audience. The audience applauds. The man bows. He is the conductor, the leader of the orchestra, and he holds a stick in his hand. It is called a baton, which is French for stick. The conductor raises the baton in the air, way up, on the ceiling of Philharmonic Hall. Six chandeliers sparkle silently. The conductor brings the baton down, and the hall, which is as wide and long as a red velvet football field, fills with music. The music floats and rises. It sings and dances from violins, violas, cellos, double basses, flutes, a piccolo, bassoons, clarinets, oboes, French horns, trumpets, trombones, a tuba, a harp, drums, cymbals, chimes, and one thin silver triangle. It is 8.30 on Friday night, and the 105 men and women dressed completely in black and white have gone to work, turning the black notes on white pages into a symphony. God, this is hard to turn. They are the members of the Philharmonic Orchestra, and their work is to play beautifully. Okay, that was an awesome story. Now, my warm fuzzy butter cookies, I want you to read good books, bake good cakes, and I'll see you next time. Until then, I gotta fly. Bye!